Strandbergs are the most popular ergonomic guitars on the planet, and they come in a few really cool designs. But Aristides attempts to improve on that design by removing all of the wood, giving you a lot of upgradable features, and changing the hardware. Which is better, the Strandberg or the Aristides? Let's find out. And just so you know, today we're only comparing price and features. If you want to hear how these guitars sound, I have dedicated deep dives for each of them on my channel. So if we start from the headless hardware, Strandberg has a system that uses six individual screws. We also have a zero fret and a Teflon nut. And the Aristides is pretty similar, but the hardware is slightly different. And I will say that I preferred the Aristides hardware for a few different reasons. The first reason is that it is lower profile than the Strandberg's, which sticks up a lot higher off the fretboard. And the second reason is that the Strandberg locking mechanism has a couple of sharp corners that I always feel myself bumping into when I'm playing in this lower position. Now the RST days mechanism isn't notably smooth, but for some reason I just never feel myself hitting it like I do on a Strandberg. So I think that the hardware on the RST days is slightly better, but they do both do the job perfectly well. I should also mention that since RST days doesn't have a zero fret, you never have to worry about that wearing down. By comparison, the last Strandberg that I owned was only a few years old, but the zero fret had already worn out and needed to be replaced. So this will need to be upgraded for sure, whereas you don't have to worry about upgrading anything in this area. Now the necks on both of these guitars are very, very different. The Strandberg is of course known to have the Endor neck profile, which is a very unique profile that's only found on Strandberg guitars. By comparison, the RC Days has a regular, basically modern C typical neck you find on most guitars. I actually find the Endor neck a lot more comfortable than a standard modern C. And the thing that I'll also mention about the Endor neck is that even if you don't find the Endor neck's ergonomics beneficial, I really don't think you'll find it annoying or in the way. I personally could pick up a Strandberg guitar and any other guitar and I have no issue transitioning between the two necks. So this is of course mostly personal preference, but I think the Endor neck is at least interesting, whereas the modern C is just, you know, you get it everywhere, it's fine, but it's also not very exciting. And if you do want to pick up a Strandberg guitar, I highly recommend you use Sweetwater and use my affiliate link below as an easy way to help out the channel with no additional cost to you. Sweetwater, of course, has the best customer service, they have the best return policies, and they have a huge selection of Strandberg guitars for you to check out. And I'll link my favorite Strandberg guitar below for you to take a look at. Now, when it comes to the heel joints, you'll notice that over the years, Strandberg has been phasing out a lot of their neck through designs in favor of this kind of bolt-on design. And when it comes to high fret access, this is still perfectly fine. And if you need a neck through joint, then there are a few models left that still have that neck through design on a Strandberg. And by comparison, all Aristides guitars have this absolutely gorgeous and very, very comfortable, perfect set neck type design. I mean, it's not really a set neck because it's made with one piece of material in a mold, but you get what I'm saying here. It has this really smooth design. And this is found on all Aristides guitars. Now, this is going to be personal preference again because there are of course some people who prefer both on design because of the snap and the pick attack and all of that stuff. I'm someone who personally always prefers a neck through design, especially when it is this smooth and well done. So Aristides gets the win in that category. But I will also say that if you spend the extra money to get a neck through style Strandberg, it's equally comfortable. Now, the Strandberg has a 20 inch radius, which is fantastic. It's crazy that more companies don't offer guitars that have a 20 inch radius. I love seeing that on the Strandberg. And the Aristides has a compound radius. I believe it's 12 to 16. I'll put it on screen. Either way, the Aristides is more of a standard kind of a thing. And the Strandberg is again, more unique. And I just so happen to like the Strandberg more. Now from my recollection, Strandberg used to only use rich life fretboards, but now they're also using regular wood like maple and rosewood. And all of the Aristides guitars, since they have no wood, again, have rich light fretboards. I don't really see any issues either way as long as it's high quality maple, which I assume Strandberg would be using to begin with. I will say that I have seen complaints about fret sprout on Strandberg guitars, and I've experienced it myself as well. Whereas I've rarely have ever seen any complaints about fret sprout on Aristides guitars. Of course, technically speaking, every guitar, no matter how expensive it is, can have fret sprout. Now, when it comes to the style of the frets, I like the Strandberg fan a bit more than the Aristides fan. The Strandberg fan is 25.5 to 25 inches, so it's extremely subtle, which means that even if you prefer straight frets like I do, the fan on this guitar shouldn't cause you any major issues. By comparison, the fan on the Aristides is 26.15 to 25, so it is definitely more noticeable, and for me, I, I just don't like it. 
That being said, if you're someone who does down tune and you do like fan frets, then having an actual extended length on the low E string will be helpful for you. Whereas on the Strandberg, just going to 25.5 doesn't make it any different than a regular 25.5 inch scale guitar. So this is really going to be, again, personal preference, but I think the Strandberg is going to be more applicable to a wider range of people, whereas the Aristides is going to be really great for those who like to down tune more frequently. Now these bodies do look very similar as you can tell, but I have to say, they don't feel exactly the same. The Strandberg, even if you're not using a strap, tends to just sit on me perfectly. So for example, this is my preferred playing position with any guitar. And when I have the Strandberg, I could just get here very quickly and start playing even without a strap. I'm not carrying the weight of the instrument with my left hand whatsoever. And of course we have nice contouring on the back and we have a nice forearm bevel as well. When it comes to the Aristides, when I go to that same position, it just doesn't, fit and sit the exact right way like the Strandberg does. For one, the balance on this instrument is totally different than the balance on a Strandberg. It's also ever so slightly heavier. Now, I wouldn't say this guitar has any neck dive. That's obviously not the case, but I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting and playing this guitar without a strap. That's partly because of the shape and I just find the Strandberg has a better design overall, even if it's just slightly better. I should also mention that the input jack location on this guitar, even though it has two, both locations are not as good as they are on the Strandberg because you have to use an angled cable to have this sit on your lap like this in the perfect way without it causing an issue. The Strandberg only has one jack, but since it's recessed a bit more, no matter what cable you use, it will not be in the way when you're playing the Strandberg guitar. Now, of course, the major benefit of the Aristides is that you have a ton of customization. You can get any pickups you want for the most part, which of course you can't do with the Strandberg. That being said, I've never heard a Strandberg sound bad. All the pickups sound absolutely great, whatever they use. They used to use a lot of short pickups, now they use a lot of, of their own stock pickups. So you have to say that the Aristides wins just because you can customize it, but I've never needed to customize the Strandberg. Apart from the pickups, both use very high quality electronics and all of that stuff, so there's nothing to really compare there. But in terms of the floating bridges, I think there's a huge difference. The Strandberg floating tremolo is definitely very good. It stays in tune really, really well, and it feels good. I can definitely use it. But the Aristides tremolo is simply better in my opinion. It's more silky, it's slightly more responsive, and it just feels a little bit more higher quality in terms of the tolerances on the different parts. To be fair, I've never really seen anyone complain about the tremolo on Strandbergs. And again, like I said, they are really, really great, but I just like the Aristide slightly more. I will say that the Strandbergs bridge, technically speaking, isn't inherently multi-scale, whereas the Aristides is. So if you're someone who doesn't like playing on a multi-scale bridge, you'll like the Strandberg more. But if you don't care either way, the Aristides definitely feels better in my opinion. And if you're enjoying this style of conversation, consider checking out my Patreon link below. It's a really nice community. We talk about gear and guitar playing. I can answer every single comment and it really helps out the channel. So consider it if you'd like, it's linked below. So now we're on to price. You can buy a Strandberg guitar for well under $2,000 and you can't even really find a used Aristide Settlers for less than $3,000. So there's going to be a big difference in price there. You can of course also go on to just about any big box store and try an Aristides guitar to see if you like it. By comparison, you can't try an Aristides ahead of time, most of the time, and you certainly can't return it if you don't like it. I'll just say this, if I had to choose between a $3,000 Aristides and a $3,000 Strandberg, I would personally pick a $3,000 Strandberg. I don't believe it's as high quality as the Aristides, but I do think that it just feels better overall for me personally especially when it comes to the fan fret design, this flatter of a fretboard radius. I just like this guitar a lot more than this guitar, regardless of price. But at the same time, if you need custom inlays and you like a more aggressive fan fret design, then the RST Days is going to be great for you. They are both super high quality guitars.